Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage. Today we're gonna do a fun little week in the life of video. We've been doing these occasionally and day in the life of, and we've been realizing we do a lot of kind of interesting stuff that we used to never film, so we're trying to show that a little more um, because we have a lot going on other than just the normal working on the cars and part stuff. So um, this week is going to be, or is, unseasonably warm for February in the East Coast. It is supposed to be like mid to high 50s and into the 60s pretty much all week. So we're gonna try and get a bunch of stuff done that we were going to wait to do until spring, but since it's too nice, we're gonna get a jump start on it. So number one thing is moving and reorganizing the shop a little bit. Um, now that we have the upstairs built, uh, my big thing was get running and driving cars upstairs, project cars down here, get rid of the clutter downstairs so we can work more efficiently and a little easier. Um, so one of those things is you know, reorganizing. So we saw we got the Platon table or the Acorn table, which is the nickname for anybody that didn't know, that's just a brand name, uh, for a fixturing table or a Platon table. We moved already some stuff around when we realized we should start filming. So we moved the chassis table outside just for now. Um, we are gonna probably use the forklift eventually, it's still a little wet, um, to pick this up and put it over on the side of the shop with some other like chassis table stuff that we have and just stack them up until um, we need them next. So inside we've been reorganizing a little bit. Uh, Mike's car, as you know, is a roller now. So this is kind of what prompted this. It's like now we have another car that's on the ground. So uh, exciting for Mike, but we need to make sure that we make room for everything. So. Um, yeah, so we moved a bunch of stuff around. We're kind of reorganizing and making this whole fab area back here. <coughs> Where we used to uh, kind of put a car back in there, we're, we're gonna stop that so that we can have more room for the tools. All the tools were kind of bunched together, like the feed roller and the trigger stretcher and the anvil and all that stuff, and it became a pain because it was hard to get to the toolbox. So we kind of opened everything up now so you could still use the English wheel, no problem. I uh, have shrinker stretchers here, anvils tucked in behind, and then we put the plate and table here. And I've been dying to do this for a while. Now we have a nice area that I can do. It's a little bit of a mess because we're doing some other stuff, which we'll show you. But um, we, uh, I can do layout here. So I've been working on the trunk floor on the Sweetheart Roadster, and I have this big piece of sheet metal. I can just sit down at the table and cut pieces out, lay patterns out, and we can also use it to fixture things and weld it, etc. So super handy. So. Uh, the only thing we did is we left it on wheels for now. We're gonna put some kind of risers underneath to get it just a little higher. The height it's at now is not too bad with the wheels underneath of it, but when you set it down, it's gonna be a little low. So we're gonna leave the wheels on until we get that figured out. But now there's all this room. And eventually these are gonna go away as well. Oh yeah, I'm gonna get rid of this bench. It is a, if you, you've probably seen it in the videos, it is a black hole and things just, you know, we got like freaking like a, a fixed in head here that I've been meaning to weld forever that's just sitting there. It turns it moon, one of Moon's toys. What that? He's like, I forgot that was even in here. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Great move. So anyway, so, so that table is going to go, eventually I'm going to be getting a bigger lathe and this table is probably going to go and just have a standalone lathe there. Um, yeah, so that's why we've been trying to get stuff set up. So other thing we're about to do now is our buddy Kevin, who is helping a friend clean out um, like an industrial area, a piece of property that a friend of his owns that one of the buildings on the property used to be an old service station. And they pretty much just thought it was just full of old shelves and junk. He went up on top of the old office of the service station and he found this sign face down. Which saved. Yeah, it saved the whole face of it. It's in super nice condition. Um, I'm guessing it's what? I think it's 40s, 40s, late 40s, early 50s. Yeah, so old Amico sign, it's, it's tin, um, printed, but it's still really, really cool. It's quite unusual. We were trying to research it so we could give a fair price to um, the owner and Kevin, um, and couldn't find a lot of info about the, the value and the age, but either way, I told Kevin I wanted it for me, so it wasn't like we were buying to resell. And, I uh, made them an offer and they, they were happy to accept it. And now we're gonna hang it. So we've been taking down a lot of little signs and putting the big ones up here and then moving some of the small to medium signs upstairs. Hey. So. <laughs> Steve just came out from the shadows. He didn't see me <laughs> so we're gonna hang the sign, all kinds of stuff. Enough rambling. We're gonna get to work and take you along for a ride this week.
set it up on top of the bridge port. I got a hold of it. Okay, I want to get up here so I can get a better grab on it. <clears throat> Hold on one sec, let me get back on the other one. Yep. Needs to go down towards you. You want to set it down. I can. If you hold it just like that, I can get my chain around. It's okay. sitting on top of the band saw. Need a hand? Just one hand, not two. Well, I can only offer one hand. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's all I got. Hold on a sec. So you went around everything? Yeah, all. Well, yeah. Yep. <clears throat> you just went to the first? Yep. Oh, you went all the way to the first one. Okay. Might have the washer. Oh, no, I went under the, the link above the screw. Oh, the link above the screw. Okay. Yep. There you go. Man, that sign is freaking big. It is. Yeah, it is. <coughs> it's like really big. <coughs> now you just need to get another four by eight foot. Yeah, go in between those windows. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, I, I always said if I'm gonna do anything, I start upgrading signs. So that yeah, one there, yeah. that one there is pretty crappy. So that could be easy to. All right. So what'd you find on Dad's car? Oh, the cross steering link, the, the end of it was shot. It was, there was nothing left of it, it just flopping around. So got a, what appears to be a new old stock one from our friend Pete, and that's going on the car now. Yeah, so dad can stop complaining about. That was why the steering was so loose in it. Yep. <laughs> for sure, that was one of the reasons. And also, it's kind of a poor design Ford did. The the tie rod is, is part, it's all one, so you can't really. You can replace that side. But not that side. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can't service it, so that was bad, and uh, that should. It was pretty scary when Steve showed me. He's like, I think I know what a steering was sloppy in this thing. <laughs> it was like rattle, rattle, rattle. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, of course, Pete had brought like 15 over. 15 first. of them. There was one or two that were new old stock. That one's definitely new old stock. It never even been on a car, so yep. that one's good to go. Steve's been working on a bunch of stuff on the bottom of the car as well. He got. Uh, we bought like a universal uh, handbrake. Uh, or emergency brake kit, and uh, we used the original, he used the original uh, 47 handbrake, got that all hooked up with the cables, and now we have a working emergency brake for dad. We got all the shocks hooked up, so I think we showed in one of the videos, maybe we were tinkering on these. Oh yeah, the um, last week in the life of. Yeah, we were showing these. So we got the rear shocks and the front on. We'll show you when it's all back down and together. Um, maybe we'll take it for a drive this week too. That would probably be a good idea since it's nice. Um, we can show you guys how much like more stiff it is. It was like a freaking on a boat in the ocean before. So uh, it is a lot better now. And it pe um, pretty much got all the major stuff taken care of on it. Fingers crossed. Uh, Steve's been working away, just tightening bolts and fixing things and whatever. But throw that on and then we'll be good to go. Fifteen. <laughs> Do it to me. <laughs> You're at eleven. <laughs> Thank you. Twelve. <laughs> Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eight. We also learned that Steve can count higher than twenty today. Woohoo! Yay me! <laughs> <clears throat> Nate would be impressed. Well, at least somebody would be. That's There we go. One steering but It's link. better already. Absolutely. Has to be. <laughs> There's no mathematical way it can be worse. No. <laughs> oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> no, more, no more moving up and down and in circles. All right, so one of the things we had to do on dad's car that uh, we didn't have, and again, our friend Pete has a vast collection of old Ford stuff and uh, he messed with a lot of these 41 to 48. So we needed some of these special bolts for the hood that, ha that have the shoulder on it. We had just thrown some bolts in just to get the hood on it and uh, they were coming loose. Every time you open the hood, it like works the bolt loose. So we have to go through and carefully put these back on the hood. 
Um, Pete had a bunch of little jars of these bolts. Some of them are usable, some of them are junky ones, but um, he also had some brand new repro like drink ones. So we hopefully should have enough to put the hood on. That way the hood never really fit right or sat right because these bolts were just flopping around loose. So we're gonna get those on. And then the hood should hopefully, fingers crossed, latch and sit kind of right. All right, so we're going to, uh, we got the hood to latch, which is the first time ever. Um, we had to do some modifications to the pin, but <laughs> we got it to work and it latches and it's good. So we're gonna take this around the block this time without dad so that if anything really sketchy, I don't wanna say sketchy, just anything he can complain about um, is taken care of. So see if we need the choke or not. Nope. Oh yeah, and we're off. All right, so we're gonna try and, I keep aiming for the, or trying to reach for the clutch. Yeah, don't do that on this so car. so weird. Yep. Only car with an automatic other than my pickup truck. <laughs> yep. Brakes are, adjusting the brakes made it a lot. I'm like, whoa, why is the brake yeah. working so well? Oh. Already you can feel with the shocks, it's. Oh yeah. You can feel the difference right away. Probably the trunk wood will bang knowing our, knowing our luck. I don't, know if, I don't know if we, look, we could ever get all the rattles worked out of this car. Not it gets quiet. Just like this, at least if you get it to the point where it's pretty close, mm -hmm. we can move it around and yep. bring it down, tinker with it. Okay, so we turned the idle down a little bit. Steve was checking the trans, uh, automatic transmission fluid. Now that we actually got the thing warmed up all the way, you could check that, et cetera, et cetera. Still had a couple little things we noticed. We got to do some alignment. I think the front end was a little light. Feels like it needs some more toe in. We didn't really check that closely, but. Um, do you close the hood, Steve? It looks cool sitting on this hill. <laughs> yeah, it does. We got the hood latching now, finally, nicely. Oh yeah, the hood didn't pop open with all the ro bad roads we drove on. Yeah, there we go, yep. Yeah, looks good. Sounds good. Need some more refinement, but not too bad. You want you can pull it in if you want. Yep. While Steve's pulling that in, I'll show you guys uh, something I got done since the last time we did an update. I got the garage door company to come out and hook me up with some electric garage door openers. So we're all set with that. Um, they put some new seals on the bottom because with the threshold that I put on and they needed some adjustment and some different seals. So everything sits nice and tight now and it's good, but I got these little clickers here. I got a bunch of them. So now when you're driving in, you can just hit the button and you know, we're good to go. Probably need 
need to go forward a bit more. Right there. Good. Oops, wrong one. Hmm. Yeah, the back cave. <laughs> In the back cave. Cool. Getting closer. Okay, so one cool thing about these vlog videos, we're able to show you some of the stuff we get questions about a lot. And uh, stuff we're working on it isn't a whole video. So the T, it's been something we've been getting a lot of questions about. People seen in the background under the cover. Why is it still downstairs? Um, basically, there was some stuff. Just when I built this car, we were trying to throw it together, and it's like a thorn in my side that we've just had issues both with the engine that are and different stuff. So we've been working to make this thing more streetable. Um, basically when I built the car I was an idiot and I made basically a race car without uh, and wanted to drive it on the street so there was no fan there was no uh, there was no charging system all kinds of ridiculous stuff and you know instantly that caused problems trying to drive it around so a couple things we've been working on and we finally finished um, I got this idea Andy Kohler Kohler custom Andy's building some really cool cars super talented guy um, he mentioned on one of his posts on a customer car used one of these, so it's like a mini, it's not even an alternator, but it looks kind of like a mini alternator. It's like the size of a of an idler. And Andy put one of them on a customer car, and I, I you know, Power Social Media was able to find them and look at them. So uh, this is like off a John Deere tractor or some kind of tractor. I machine, I took the snout of a stock generator and I machined the opening bigger so that the, this alternator can fit through. We're going to call it an alternator. I don't know what it actually is. And it can fit through there. And then I welded these ears on so it can bolt up um, to the alternator. And then we left, you can see the stock mounting point down there. So it kind of, it basically mounts like a stock generator, but it's real shallow. And it puts out something like 25 or 30 amps, I believe. 20 or 25, which stock generator I think is 30. So it acts a lot like a generator when we've run the car um, after we did it, uh, where it doesn't charge a ton at idle, but once you get the RPMs up, it you know the, the voltage goes up to 12, 7, 12, 8, you know, whatever, and it is charging. So we got that done. Other thing I did is I this had no fan, and we have this crazy magneto on it, which I finally got timed and worked out where the engine cracks off pretty good. And um, I needed a fan because the thing, this little baby radiator, as soon as it gets heat in this thing, you cannot get it to cool down unless you're going like down the road. So I made this little like shroud that's kind of reminiscent of some of the old show cars back in the day. They would put like covers over the radiator just to make it look pretty. So I made this little like box cover thing. And what it does, is it hides a little mini electric fan. This is where everybody runs around shouting in circles because um, I am very into period correct, but this is necessary to drive this car. So I added that, hit it, you can't really see it. We have a little switch down here that we could flip on. Fan runs. So hopefully when we're sitting at idle um, or low speeds, we can turn that on and it'll keep the car from you know, acting up. So Steve also worked on the cars. We had all kinds of problems with these used up old carbs. They're off a race engine. And we had tons of problems. We ended up ordering emulsion tubes from Vintage Speed and going through and really, really cleaning the things. And we got it pretty darn good now to where they don't, um, they at least are sort of working like they're supposed to. So that's good. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna run this thing, see if we can get it to, you know, run and idle for longer than it probably ever has now that we have a fan. And uh, we're just about ready for another test drive here very soon. But that's what's going on with the T and let you hear the sweet sounds of the T sitting here idling. Alright, and we got our exhaust tubes on, thanks to our buddy Jason, it uh, hooked us up with a set of them from an old repair shop he had them kicking around, um, so we don't smoke ourselves out in here. <laughs> Appreciate all the concern from everybody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, all right, so we'll see how this thing cooperates today.
outside and listen to the exhaust a little bit. <laughs> Mr. Moon. Yeah. You done going to the bathroom? Let's go in the shop. All right. It is, I don't even know what day it is. Wednesday, maybe? Yeah, Wednesday. And uh, yeah, yesterday we got that tea running. And we got the tea running a little better. That's the probably the it is the longest I've ever let that car idle um, because I didn't have a fan on it ever. So you'd run the thing for 10 minutes maybe or so, and the thing would start to get warm. We shut it down. We ran it for 20. I think it was 22 or 25 minutes we ran it for. And with that fan, it was able to stabilize the temp, and it didn't just keep going crazy and, and going to the moon overheating. It just kind of sat right at that 190 range and just sat here and idled and idled and idled, which was awesome. I mean, that's not generally what you want to be doing with a car like that anyways, with that tiny little radiator. Sitting in traffic for 25 minutes, I think a lot of people would get nervous with a flathead and a tiny radiator like that and you know all that stuff. So that is pretty good. Um, one thing we need to go back over and we're trying to get better at is with one downside with doing the channel and doing the videos and jumping around all these projects is a lot of times the little things get missed. That's especially why I hired Steve on because uh, me as one person trying to knock the videos out and then there's a lot of stuff that just gets missed. It isn't you know good for the video but is definitely important for driving the car. So um, we put the T up on the lift. Steve and I were working on the alignment a little bit the, uh, with the cow steering and the alignment. We had just thrown this car together to try and get it to Viva East before my arm got infected and I almost died. So I had some friends helping with the alignment and I was not feeling very well and I was not paying attention and the steering has never been centered. Basically, you couldn't steer to the left very, as fo very far and you could steal mu steer much further to the right. So we kind of centered all the steering and what I'm doing over here, Steve's gonna do a nut and bolt check and all that kind of stuff on the car just to make sure that nothing falls off since we're gonna start doing some test drives even further from home. I wanna make sure everything's cotter pinned and all that. So one thing I did with the car just to get it together was I made this drag link that basically the way I've done them for years or previously was I would make a, make a sleeve and I would, I would weld it in to, the, uh, to another drag link and shorten it that way. And then I just blended it together. You could see if you look that the size gets a little larger because of the sleeve I made. And, um, and that's because I didn't have a way to tap these. I didn't have the, the die. So finally, I broke down and bought the expensive die, which I have here. I think it's 11 16 24. It's kind of an odd uh, thread pitch that Ford used. And uh, it's, they're not easy to find, but I was able to find these. The reverse thread one I was not able to find yet as far as the die goes, but I got the standard thread. So what I'm gonna do is I will... Who's here, man? Good job, buddy. Good guard, buddy. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to 
shorten this so now that I have the correct die, um, I can take a chrome drag link or, or that I've had laying around or steering rod and I can shorten it and then just tap the threads onto it and we can make a chrome drag link, which is what I always wanted for that car. I just didn't have the ability at the time and this is what I threw together and painted black and I had chrome, I had old chrome tie rod ends on it, but I didn't have the chrome drag link itself. So it has some nicks and dings, but it'll still, the car is not perfect. So uh, this will be, I think, uh, an upgrade in the appearance while we're here doing the alignment try and knock out some of the stuff I've always wanted to do on the car anyways so uh, I'm gonna cut this down use the die and uh, tap it it needs to be somewhere like way down here and then I'll uh, put it back together and do our set our toe and everything and then we'll be ready to move on to the next steps of getting the T roadworthy All right, so we got the steering, uh, the drag link on, and it looks awesome. I'm glad I did that. So if anybody needs to do that, grab one of those dies, and then you can cut down these, uh, whether it's chrome or not, you can make your custom length uh, drag links and stuff like that by just using the, weaving the reverse side, thread side on, and then just cutting it down and tapping it. So everything's tightened up, that looks good. We're gonna quick show you guys just setting the toe on this car. Um, straight axle cars are actually quite easy because you don't, Unlike a modern car, you don't have to set it on the ground up and down and uh, and roll the car back and forth to get the suspension to settle. This, it's straight axle. You just set the toe and set it down and it's done. It's like a big old truck. So um, basically we're going to measure, usually we use like the parting line in the tire um, is a pretty good spot to do it. And you measure across the front of the wheel, front of the tires and we try and stay level. So we'll try and aim for a spot that's common on both of them that Steve and I will just aim for. So sometimes I'll, the steering lock here, I'll aim for that. And then you just uh, put that across and um, measure there and then go in the back, do the same thing. And we've been setting them for quarter inch towing. So that is just how we've been doing it. Um, a lot of people do eighth inch, which is kind of standard for, for modern cars, but my dad kind of was telling me with a lot of the older trucks and older cars with straight axles, he used to do quarter inch and it would help make them track a little straighter. Um, so I've been doing that and I've noticed that the cars are a lot more stable, uh, feel a lot more stable and I haven't really found any negatives, so to speak, as far as tire wear or anything like that. So yeah, we're gonna do some measurements, turn this guy right here to get our toe in set and then uh, this thing will be ready for the the uh, steering and everything should be all set and good to go and should drive a lot nicer now. So first thing I do, because it's really confusing a lot of times and um, I have terrible short-term memory, um, Steve and I both do. So uh, <laughs> you know, I, a lot of times we write front and rear, write your measurements on there and then you do your subtra subtractions and figure out where we're at. And a lot of times what would happen is we'd say the number and then us talking, we're like, well, what was that front number? And then we remeasure like 18 times. So. Uh, sometimes I write on the lift. We're gonna actually use a piece of cardboard this time. Do that. So let's take our measurement here. So I guess we'll do like right across the center of that lock lock pin, and then the parting top. Parting line. Yep. There we go. Here at 55 and 9 sixteenths. Let me write that down. 
Okay. All right, you good? Yep. We are at 56 and a quarter. 56 and Write that down before we start saying any other numbers. But I'll forget as well. 56 and a quarter, I said. And 56 and a quarter, so, so we're like... About a, about a half inch towed in. We're yeah, pretty so, close. Yeah, it's really not that bad. Yep. So we got to go out a quarter, so... Yeah. We are way wider in the rear. Okay, so let me go... That's probably good. Yeah, yeah. And are you pretty much in the center yep. of that pin? Yep. Okay, so I am now at 55 and three quarters. Maybe it's like a 30 second act. Well, if I pull it tight, it's 55 and three quarters. Okay. I'll write that down. We're going the right way. 55 and. 15 sixteenths. If I let it loose, it's 56. That's, 50. that's a quarter inch. Yeah. That was a little too easy. <laughs> that was a little too easy. Yeah. What did I say? 55 and... 55 and 15 sixteenths. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're within a third. Because like I said, the front was like actually a 30 second. Yeah. So we're, we're in the ballpark. Yep, there. So I think that's good to lock down. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. And then we'll we'll drive and see how it is and if we gotta change right. it. But that's that one was pretty quick and easy. Some of them are take us a lot longer. <laughs> so what are we doing today? Well, since uh, we're getting fake spring, uh, <laughs> it's, it's like it's like 55 degrees out today. Yeah, yesterday was like m mid 60s. Yeah. It's really weird. Um, so we're starting like all of these spring projects that we in were, February in February because I'm like, hey, it's gonna be like. Thursday and Friday, really warm. We might get a little rain today, but it's going to be warm. So uh, we're working on the ceiling of the, the new shop. Um, right at the end of the season, we got some of this tin that was salvaged off an old metal building. We're going to use it for the ceiling. Um, we got to run to Joe uh, that's doing our, uh, that did the interior on the Shoal car. He said he has room for the car to finish out the inside of the car doing a headliner and and around the inside of the cabin. And uh, so we're gonna take the stroll car for a nice winter drive over to his place, drop that off. And uh, hopefully we'll see how far we get on the tin and get a little bit of work done on the building in this ridiculously nice weather on Thursday and Friday. Moon's very happy. He is super happy. <laughs> Dude, that's dead nuts on the marks, too. Look at that, cut your mark right in half. Look at that, Steve knows how to use a tape measure. Let's not get carried away, Steve, that lucky we one. We didn't hang it up yet, it might be. <laughs> we, didn't account, we, we didn't account that for the- nine foot eight, we're yeah. not sure yet. <laughs> we didn't account for the droopage.
fine. You're good. Every car is so different to drive. The well, last time I rode in this was with Steve, so you're probably doing better than Steve was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, does he know where he's going? Probably not. Wait for Steve. And this is why Mike will never own a channel car. You got room. You're not that bad. There's a bolt. Ah, you're fine. Yeah, once we put the uh, headline in here, you're probably not going to have I'm it. really going to have to slouch. Everything's just for me. Like, you walk the door here, and my leg could go right in between the window crank. Yeah. So when we took the car apart, there was all vinyl, white vinyl, you know, wrapped around here. And you could see it was on the headliner, but it was all tattered. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, I don't know how, you know, I'm not real particular. This might be a little bit of a pain because it's metal in the B pillar, so you can't, you can't narrow oh, into it. Figure, figure something out there. Yeah, basically we can just, you know, behind the seat around here, wrap around and then a headliner tight. You know. Want to go down behind the seat with anything, right? Uh, just, just enough that you can't see. see it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Someday, pipe dream. Maybe finish the trunk out in this car. The side panels and stuff. Someday, but you know. Like I've done these on street rods before, where you don't have much of a, you don't have a lip. Okay. Around these, uh, and I've made them fit right up against this, mm -hmm. around around. But yep. I notice in beautiful. They, the old school, apparently they did it in a couple of pieces because they had a joint here, ah, an okay. angle joint. Yeah. Do you care if I do that? No, I don't mind. I'm not particular about the, the joint that's in there. Okay. Um, I, may, yeah. I may and I may not. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I'm not too particular because I don't, I imagine that whatever was done in the car probably wasn't that. Yeah, and, and you do get a joint here too. Right there. Yeah, that's the fine. Just installs the window frame up. Anything we're doing is probably going to be a higher quality than what the car had, and I don't have any interior photos of the car, so we're just going off of remnants, so that's fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much, I mean, everything else interior-wise is working out nice. The seat kicks ass, man. This is, we nailed it. So, all good. Because it's, uh, for me, it's super comfortable to drive. I kind of slouch, and this little bolster is like, really nice.
right, so end of day one. Day one, yeah, it all blends together. Uh, yeah, we got the tin up. Um, Let's say we're, we're what, yeah, third of the way we done. We kind of got ahead of ourselves and didn't realize that we probably should have cleaned the metal a little better before we got it up. So Mostly. Them, this one specifically got really dirty. Uh, and we will have to do something about that. But the nails were already in, we were not pulling them out. <laughs> and, uh, sure, uh, but yeah, we're, the hardest part is just cutting around everything, getting it in. Um, Mike ended up had a good idea to put these, these lights all the way up instead of hanging them from chain, get them all the way up high. And this was my plan from the start. It's just, we didn't, well, I didn't want to screw them to the ceiling and then take them out and then screw them back again, yeah, so. so. It worked out really good, so once we tomorrow get past the really difficult stuff of cutting around garage door openers and all that stuff, um, yeah, and we probably, it would have been a little easier if we would have done the garage door openers after this, but we didn't think it was gonna get this warm this quick and I wanted to get the doors in because the garage door company had an opening that they could do them right away. And so that's just how it goes sometimes. So we'll uh, hopefully tomorrow make good, good progress. We have plenty of metal left, which is nice. Yes. Um, luckily, I, we, we got plenty. So um, yeah, it'd be kind of cool to see it all closed in. It makes it look a little smaller in here, but uh, it, it definitely also, made the space above the office seem very small. Yeah, but it's great because we have, you know, we put some stuff up there, so. But yeah, get back at it tomorrow. Tomorrow's another day. So it's kind of end of the day Friday. We got a lot done. We're going to show you some of the updates on the uh, top of the garage and uh, what we've been up to the past two days, basically. So the office, uh, pretty much I got mostly finished out. We ended up using uh, between what I had and Pete gave me and what we had in the inventory. I was able to cover the whole outside and most of the inside uh, to cover the top here. I think I'm going to leave this area open, put little shelves, maybe put some of my like little toy car type stuff up there. Uh, I made, uh, with the leftover um, floorboards that were left, um, we had a little bit that's sitting around, so I made some heavy duty bookshelves to hang on the wall here, and finally got most of my hot rod and you know little book collection all organized, and I spent like weeks uh, one by one going through and organizing everything by like, you know, month, year, blah, blah, blah. Got them in these bins. If anybody's looking to do this, Mike found these on Amazon for fairly inexpensive. They come in black as well. Oh, do they? Yes, I have black ones at home. Oh man, that's... that's <laughs> you missed that. Yeah. They're Anyways. pretty inexpensive too. They're a couple bucks a piece. Yeah, so you get packs of like, whatever, five or ten. And I got all them and it makes it super nice because now you can pull it out and, you know, grab whatever issue you need. And then over here, um, if you guys were at the Allentown Swap Meet or you've been noticing on our social media, on our Iron Trap Finds on Instagram, Mike's been listing a lot of books and magazines. I went through and kind of did an audit. I had a lot more books and reference material and I got rid of some stuff that maybe I read one time and didn't think I could use or I, had, I ended up finding out I had a bunch of duplicates of books where they like, I had the original printing and then they made another one and like, 20 years later with a different cover and I didn't realize they were the same book. I just bought them at a swap meet. <laughs> so I went through and organized all that. I have, you know, a lot of my favorite books here that we use for reference. Started hanging random crap in here up. Um, 
And one neat thing we did is this is something we bought forever ago. I'm able to put some of this stuff up I've had for years, but you couldn't see it downstairs because it was kind of lost in the madness that it we was. We bought this on our first pecking adventure ever, right? Yeah, one of our early videos, I think, where we went to Connecticut and Massachusetts yep. with uh, visit our buddy Clint and um, went digging around. We found this at uh, a place up there, and I haven't known, I've been able to figure out what to do with it. It's a little Carter carburetor gasket stick. So what I'm doing is, People have been giving me and I've been finding like original photos. Uh, some of our mail calls, some people have sent us like original photos. These are old like stock car crash photos. Um, I have some stuff that I bought and some friends have given us that are like old original photos from local hot rod shows and different stuff like that. So I have all these, I've been putting them in here just to keep them kind of organized. That's it's actually nice. a really good way to keep them straight. Yeah, it's a good way to keep them organized and, and sitting. And uh, and then eventually someday I will get them organized by like hopefully like show or area. Um, but for now, I don't have that many, so it's pretty quick and easy. I have this cool gasket thing I got years ago um, that we had sitting in the back of the shop. You couldn't even see it. It was behind the big blue lift. It and survived the lift falling on it, surprisingly. Yeah, it did, actually. <laughs> And just a neat piece, but you couldn't see it. So it's kind of nice. I'm moving the big stuff downstairs. And we hung that real big sign we just got. Um, and now I can take some of the smaller stuff, bring it up here, and it's actually, you can enjoy it a little more. And it doesn't get lost on the wall downstairs. And eventually your desk is going to go here -ish. Right in here. I think we might, we're talking about getting like a couch. So if we have somebody that crashes, it's passing through. Like we do with a lot of friends, they let us cash on couch. I might put some kind of couch in here and we can do Airbnb or yes. you can come stay, buy me dinner. Um, so yeah, and we got our skull hung that we got at the... Canfield. Canfield swap. It was like the only thing I bought, but it is like one of my favorite things I bought at swap meets last year. So that's pretty cool when the lights are off and the door's shut at night, you can see the skeleton. Um, I think we showed a lot of the cases. We have a lot of that stuff up. There's, like I said, some things that I moved. Dude, yeah. adding, adding that tin made this corner much brighter, yeah. yeah. It's a lot brighter. So um, we put the tin up, obviously. It's a good time to mention it. Uh, we put all the tin up, which is half the tin up, like a little over half, uh, which is really nice. Um, you can see I have, I put a ceiling. I insulated the office. We put an actual ceiling on there. I used, this is like the ridge uh, metal from the you know, top ridge of an old barn roof. I got some of that, we put it on the corners and I kind of finished it off. And then up there is like a crawl space area, so to speak. I have an extra 32 frame rails, like our good tires that we save that are, you know, either brand new or extra ones I bought. Now we know where everything is. I keep be keeping all my extra license plates that are like open numbers on the outside here. So don't, don't show the numbers so we, they don't yeah. get taken. <laughs> uh, but basically these are plates that um, are 32, 30, three, four, whatever, cars that I think I would like to own for myself. Now I can go through and like, we can just walk around and be like, oh, I want that plate on that car, which is pretty neat. And uh, it also covers up, you know, the two by fours on the outside. So that is working out good. We just literally hung this, which is cool. Um, whole reason we put the tin up is so we can hang more shit. Just the one side. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, we got, again, got all this up. It's pretty nice having that up. And it was the hardest section to do. Yeah, the, hopefully the second section will go a lot quicker. Uh, I'm trying to think if we have anything else. New Firestone sign. Yeah, Mike found that and we did some bartering and I got that Firestone sign. Um, I think that's it. We got, I don't know if we should, we might have showed that already. Yeah, that air, pump. air pump. Um, but yeah, so pretty much now stuff's starting to get organized in here. And uh, once we get the ceiling up, we just got to do we're gonna be putting these windows in here, which I'm just waiting for warmer weather and having uh, a friend help with that that's a lot more skilled than I am. And uh, yeah, we'll be hopefully, fingers crossed, by the spring or early summer, we will have pretty much everything done. Eventually I am going to be doing some like spray, like the spray insulation where it's just like the batting that they spray in, just in the ceiling here to help keep the, uh, insulate this building a little bit. Someday I do hope to keep this at least heated in the winter so that the cars are, you know, even if it's 45 or 50 degrees in here, uh, it'll keep it nice in here. So insulating obviously will make it a lot nicer. So it's a lot of money to do for a garage 
that's for toys, but it'll be, all, it'll be nice not to have to worry about a car freezing and even just with the temperature changes, carbs sticking and doing weird stuff from you know, going from co real cold to hot, it'll be, uh, it'll be nice. So that's pretty much it for a week. We literally did like a little bit of everything, worked on cars, drove old cars, worked on the building, worked in the warehouse. Yeah, warehouse did, always. Did pretty much everything. So it's uh, fun to show you guys these, uh, these little updates. And uh, don't forget, if you haven't, uh, jump on the pre-order for the t-shirt. We're gonna be, do we're doing the uh, perfectly shitty uh, t-shirt and we have the little picture of moon in a, in a roadster. Uh, we're only doing a pre-order for this shirt. So if you are interested, you have to get in on the pre-order. We may have a few extras left over, but they're literally gonna be like five or something like that. Otherwise we're ordering basically what people uh, have ordered, a few for us, and that's it. Limited run and may never run them again. So definitely drop in the link down below. You can hit our big cartel and, uh, and buy those and it'll get you set up for the uh, pre-order and they'll ship out in the spring. Thanks guys for following along. Catch you later.